Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I've just arrived at an early morning flea market. Actually, that's not true. I've already been here for about an hour and a half, and I've got some things I want to show you on the tailgate of the truck. But first, let's take a very quiet, peaceful look at a box of ephemera and a few other things I just would like to show you. Listen to the ambient uh, noise and the natural sounds that you hear all around as we just look through some old things here at the flea market. And then I'll be back to show you what I bought. How much is this Fire King casserole? Do you mean the two quart size with the cover? Yes. Well, that's a special right now. It costs only one dollar, complete. Oh, what do you mean, complete? Well, the price includes not only the casserole and cover, but also the convenient server, which you can use as a serving tray. It keeps the hot casserole from harming your table. Oh, I see. It's made so the casserole won't slip. And you'll notice the two handles make it easy to carry baked dishes directly from the oven to the dining room. And it's genuine Fire King oven glass? Oh, yes, ma'am. And it's guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. That's one of the greatest bargains in years. Yeah. 
Well, it's probably no surprise that I would pick these up. It's pretty much signature items from the old curiosity shop uh, because they're popular and I do like to sell these items from the 1930s and 40s. Here's a little nut grinder for the kitchen. I find these in all different colors with these decals. This one is in yellow 
Um, usually I find them in green and red, so yellow was nice to find. Marked Hazel Atlas on the bottom. That's going to date to the 1930s into the 1940s. And then I always find the Jeanette um, trinket boxes here uh, with, the, uh, with the deer on the top. This is the first time I've ever found one with a dog. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that it's the Jeanette. Everything looks like the Jeanette, except I've never found it with the dog before, only the deer. So there it is in the iridescent glass. And I think these were made in the 1950s, maybe the late 40s, but I believe uh, that it was a 1950s piece. And this is uh, for the, for the uh, lady's dresser for her to put all her evening, her accoutrements in in the evening when she comes home from a night on the town. Uh, okay, let's see what else I got. Well, you know how much I love my reference books and I'm always trying to add to my library and I did so today with four books that I don't have, obviously, or I wouldn't have bought them. And I paid about $3.75 per book. So the first one is a Jean Florence book, Shakers, 1930s to 50s. Boy, that's right up my street, isn't it? In fact, there is uh, the little set that I just sold with the metal caddy. My shakers are clear glass rather than the milk glass with the stickers on them. But there it is. I can't wait to sit down and go through this. The end all be all to shakers. Also excited about Faustoria Stemware. Um, Faustoria Stemware, yeah, this looks great. Is this a Florence book? Uh, no, long and... Hmm. So Faustoria Stemware, this also looks great. So we have drawings and also the photographs of the stemware. So that's gonna be helpful when I'm trying to identify uh, a Weller book here, Weller Pottery. Weller Pottery I don't run into very often, so it's nice to have a Weller book simply because I just don't see much of it. One of my favorite patterns in pottery is actually Weller and it's called Blue Drape. I've always loved it. Let's see if it pops up quickly. There it is. Just, I think I just saw it. Where did it go? Oh, this is my bad hand. There it is, blue blue drapery. And as you can see, it's a it's a 19, what's, what does it say? Oh, marketed in 1915, uh, but it's really pretty stuff. I like that a lot. And then this book, probably the one that's gonna be the most helpful to me, Pressed Glass, 1860 to 1930. Uh, and what I really like this is when it says pressed glass, where it's not generic, it's not specific to uh, Carnival or EAPG, but it looks like a little bit of everything. Boy, is this going to be helpful. I can see myself just sitting down and spending hours. I need to head to the shore and take this with me. Uh, with some suntan lotion and a chair. <laughs> I could be out there for days on end. Uh, very much looking forward to that. So, four reference books to add to the library at about $3.75 each. I'm excited. Let's go do something else. <sighs> well, sometimes it pays to go get a cup of coffee, come back and walk around a second time, and I did. And just as I was walking up to a particular dealer who is one of my favorite, he pulls out the most amazing Art Deco set that I have seen in a long time. Uh, I'm gonna wait and show you after I get them home and get them cleaned up. They are fabulous. I'm gonna show you in this video, so don't tune me out yet. This Deco is fantastic. And when I said set, I'm not gonna tell you what I mean by set. You'll just have to wait. Tea set, radio set, set of false teeth, who knows, but I'm going to show you. Art Deco false teeth? Mm, no. Anyway, please stay tuned. You're going to love this Deco set. I promise you. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yes, I heard you. I heard the gasp. I heard the clutch my pearls moment. And that's exactly what I did. I clutched my pearls and blew out my spleen at the same time. 
when I walked up to the junkiest flea market table this morning and found this Bavarian Art Deco China, well, porcelain, unbelievable. It is fine silver decor, uh, made in Ger well, and made in Bavaria, uh, Germany, and this is going to date to the early part of the Art Deco era. This is as geometric and Art Deco as it gets. Wonderful mint green porcelain and it's all coated there with silver uh, and it's stunning. There is the uh, coffee pot standing in the back and I've got four cups and saucers and a cream and a sugar. Now you can actually see I've got six saucers so obviously two of the cups along the way disappeared. We're only down to four so I'm going to save the other two saucers and at the moment use them as coasters for the cream and sugar and someday I will have two more uh, cups to make it a complete set. Oh my goodness, let's zoom in. Look at the lightning bolt zigzag handles on this stuff and it reminds me a little bit of the shape of Modern Tone by Hazel Atlas in Glass. Uh, but this is uh, Bavarian porcelain and then it is all uh, silver plated here or decorated with silver and we can see these are tiny look at the handles on these and here are the saucers the light may be washing out the actual uh, true sort of mint green color of it but it's definitely uh, a jadeite green uh, color from the 1930s, which I love so much. And uh, it's all, there's not a chip or a crack on any of it. Nowhere, I'm telling you. I, I was going to buy it chipped up, crap, cracked up, crapped up. <laughs> Didn't matter to me what condition it was in. I was going to bring it home with me. Um, and I can find no damage anywhere, not even here on the spout or on the handle. Tip me over and pour me out. This is fantastic. Look at this sugar bowl. Now, you know, I'm flipping because this is, this is textbook Art Deco. We don't get this stuff that much in the United States. Um, you know, the, the, the uh, Europeans were ahead of us with this geometric Art Deco. So, the English knew how to do it, um, the French, the Germans, the Czechs, this is absolutely amazing and what can I say? I do think, however, although creamers rarely have lids, I think it's possible that that creamer had a lid. And the reason I say that is, if we take a close look, we can see there is a, um, a sort of a lip in here where a lid would sit. Now when you see that inner sort of lower lip, that's an indication that there would have been a lid there. It's not unheard of for creamers to have lids. And if we examine the sugar very closely, we can see the sugar bowl, of course, it has a lid. We can see that inner rim right there. And there's also one on the creamer. So there may have been a lid on that. Who knows, it's really, if, if, it, if it didn't have a lid, super, if it did, ha did have a lid, listen, it doesn't matter to me. This set is absolutely stunning. And <laughs> look at this pot back here. Look at the handle. And I haven't even, I'm not going to, I'm going to clean it, I haven't cleaned it yet, but I'm not going to polish uh, the, silver, the silver coating that's on there at all. And then, as if it couldn't have gotten any better, I turned the corner, and here is a gorgeous stretch glass plate, which I, I almost never find stretch glass plates, but I found one right here. Uh, wonderful. This almost looks like Florentine Green by Fenton. I'm not sure about that. I'm going to have to go and look it up. In my stretch glass book, Fenton had a Florentine green, uh, so, but that's just, you know, I need to go and take a look and see. Wonderful stretch glass, which was popular 
sort of in between, car well, at the tail end of carnival glass and before the plain old mass-produced colored glassware of the Depression era comes into fashion, stretch glass. The, uh, it's iridescent glass, but it's sprayed. It's allowed to, um, it, it's, the glass cools, <laughs> uh, then they spray it with these mineral spirits, and then they heat it up again. And that's what gives you this uh, sort of onion skin stretched effect, effect that we see. Sometimes it's, it's very pronounced. And uh, so can you imagine? So I found this plate and, uh, and this is about how it would be, these plates would be used. And you didn't really get dinnerware sets in stretch glass, mostly candy dishes and things like that. But look at that. Can you imagine serving some coffee and having some little, uh, oh, I don't know, well, ginger snaps <laughs> on that plate. It's beautiful. Wow. What did I pay? Now, don't get mad at me. $2 for the stretch glass plate dates to about 1920. Um, $25 woo, for the tea set, for the coffee set here, which is going to date to around 1930. It's absolutely stunning. I never thought I'd be able to have anything like this because you just don't find it. Um, gonna do some more research on the actual company who made it and uh, maybe be able to tell you a little bit more about it in, in another video. But I am absolutely smitten by this. And uh, I'm, I was really happy to share it with you. Am I selling it? No way, my good friends. No, no, this is the kind of thing uh, quality, wonderful Art Deco. I love it. So, I'm just going to stand here and stare at it for a while with my mouth wide open and say, thanks for watching everyone. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. <sighs> so long for now.